I don't see anything that says dogs aren't allowed in here, so. There it is. The Fort Gratio Lighthouse. I'm probably still pronouncing that wrong. Gratio. Gratio. Gratio Lighthouse. <laughs> oh man. Learning from Lake Huron. Huron's basin was formed by glacier movement over 20,000 years ago. All the Great Lakes were. <laughs> the lake was created when melting ice filled the basin gouged by the glaciers. It took its present shape around 3,000 years ago. Lake Huron is the second largest Great Lake based on a surface area of 23,000 square miles. <laughs> it is the third biggest lake based on volume behind Superior and Michigan. The surface of the lake is 577 feet above sea level with an average depth of 195 feet, maximum depth of 750 feet. That's far down. Mm -hmm. There you go, Lake Huron statistics. And it gives it to you in kilometers for our international fans. So there was a great storm of 1913 that lasted from November 7th through the 11th. It was a hurricane. The storm hit four of the five Great Lakes and was particularly ferocious in Lake Huron. I watched waves as high as 30 to 40 feet pounding on the light station. I think the storm had lasted another hour. The light station would have been wiped out. At the end of the storm, 19 ships were destroyed, 19 others were stranded, 250 lives were lost. So yes, the Great Lakes do get hurricanes. Oh hey, it's that Fresno lens thing again. Mm -hmm. For those who've seen our South Bass Island, a lighthouse video. <laughs> there it is. A little bit more up close. It's cool, isn't it? And look at these buildings. All these buildings, nicely preserved buildings, really cool. In 1825, a lighthouse was established near the mouth of the St. Clair River, the southern end of Lake Huron, which is right where we are. It sat just north of Forest Gratiot, the Terry outpost that would give the lighthouse its name. That light of poor construction and location crumbled in a September storm in 1828. Bids were soon offered for the replacement of the light, and in 1829, Lucius Lyon received the contract to build the new tower for the price of $4,445. The new tower's location was moved a half mile north of the original tower, which would be more visible to the mariners navigating on the lake. The tower and the keeper's dwelling were completed in late winter of 1829. Completing anything in the winter up here is impressive. Since 1829, few changes have taken place. The tower height was raised from 65 feet to 82 feet in 1862, and in 2011, a massive restoration effort replaced 35,000 damaged bricks on the outer shell of the tower. Wow. It's the oldest in the state of Michigan and the second oldest in all the Great Lakes. Really cool. It's a really old building. Really old lighthouse. Kind of cool though, that the grounds are still here after all this time. <laughs> Very old brick building, guys. Yeah, I can care. Come on, we're not peeing on historical buildings. Come on. Nope. Uh -uh. But mom, I gotta. Nope. Do not. Isn't that crazy, guys? Dedicated to Seaman Jeffrey A. Bogus, Bogus, while in the line of duty, was struck by lightning on July 25th, 1987, during his duties of the Port Huron to Mackinac race and to the Coast Guard, men, women, and families who unselfishly gave their time and support when needed most. Like This lighthouse is huge all around. All the way up there is the window. Behind the lighthouse here. Hi Canada! <laughs> That's Canada right there. You could swim there if you could if you if you could swim across that current.